I am so excited to introduce you to the CNA Principles card game. In this video, we will explore how to play the game, how to use specialty cards, and go over some basic and advanced strategy. Ready? Let's dive in and join these three players as they play the game. The Basics The basic goal of the game is simple. Collect and place one or more sets of principles to score points before the hand ends. This game will require playing several hands to win the game. The first person to reach 40 points through multiple hands wins the game. You can adjust the number of total points required to end the game to a smaller number if you're short on time. This should be agreed upon before beginning play. Principal sets detail important steps that must be adhered to when performing skills and are grouped into principles or rules. They list the principles found in For Your CNA's learning system. In this game, there are 13 collectible principle sets, each containing a specific number of cards. You will try to collect complete sets using natural cards or wilds and place those sets in front of you to secure points before the hand ends. Once a set is placed, those points will be yours, no matter who ends the hand. Sets that are complete in your hand but haven't been placed won't get you any points, so if you have a complete set, it's a good idea to put it down to get those points. Be careful though, crappy caregivers will count against you at the end of the hand. Any crappy caregiver cards that you are holding at the end of the hand will subtract a point from your game total. It's best to discard these cards or pass them off to neighbors to keep them from counting against you. The first player to have seven or more cards in complete sets placed in front of them will end the hand. Sometimes one set will end the hand if it has seven or more cards in it. Other times it will take two sets to reach the seven card threshold to end the hand. Remember, you can lay down a small set as soon as it is complete to get those points, even if it isn't enough to end the hand. So the basis of the game is simple. Collect principal sets that are all the same color, place them in front of you to score points before the hand ends, and get rid of all your crappy caregivers. Specialty cards, which we will cover in a few minutes, will add a little spice to the game. The sets. The principal sets are separated by color. All purple cards belong to the skill rules set. All light blue cards belong to the washing rules set, and so on. Each individual card highlights a different aspect of that rule. Your goal is to collect all of the same color cards to make a set. So here you can see that the skill rules set has four cards and are labeled one of four, two of four, three of four, and four of four. You need to collect all four of these cards and place them to get points. But not all sets have four cards, some have more. For instance, washing rules has eight cards in the set. That's a lot more cards to collect, but it gives you a lot more points at the end of the hand. How to play. A dealer will shuffle and deal one card to each player until all players have eight cards. The deck is then placed face down in the middle of all players and the top card is turned face up next to the deck. The players should hold and look at their cards, organize them, and decide what sets they want to collect. The player to the left of the dealer will go first. We'll call this person player one. Player 1 will either draw a card from the deck or pick up the entire discard pile. She will then discard a card, probably a crappy caregiver if she has one. If not, any card that doesn't belong to a set she's trying to collect would be a good discard. Player 2 will then either draw a card from the top of the deck or pick up the entire discard pile. He will then discard a card onto the discard pile. Player 3, which was the dealer in this case, will draw a card from the deck or pick up the discard pile. Picking up the discard pile means that the player has to pick up the entire discard pile. Then they have to discard a card to end their turn. Every player must discard a card to end their turn. When you have collected a set and are ready to place it, you would still draw a card or pick up the entire discard pile and then place the completed set in front of you, then discard. If the set is less than seven cards, play continues. If the set is seven or more cards, the hand ends. 
A set can only be placed during your turn, either after picking up a card or the discard pile, and they can only be placed when they are complete, either with natural cards or wilds. Remember that even after placing a set, you still have to discard to end the hand. If you place a set and don't have a discard, play is going to continue until you can draw a card from the pile to use as a discard. This play continues through all players. Draw a card or pick up the discard pile, place a set if you have a completed set, and then discard a card. When a player has seven or more cards and completed sets in front of them and has discarded a card, the hand ends and scoring begins. Scoring. When you collect all the cards in a set and place them in front of you, that's going to award you one point for each card within that set. This is how you accumulate points to win the game. So the skill rules set, which has four cards, would award four points. And the opening set has eight cards, so it would award eight points. Since you are trying to get to 40 points to win the game, these bigger sets can get you there much faster. After the hand ends, each player with a place set in front of them will get one point for each card in the set, regardless of who won the hand. Every player will show what cards remain in their hand and will subtract one point for every crappy caregiver that remains in their hand after the hand ends. One person who will be the scorekeeper will keep a total of how many points each person has at the end of the hand. It is possible to have a negative score if you don't have any sets placed and the hand ends with you holding some crappy caregiver cards. Wilds. A set has to be complete to be placed, but there are no limits on how many wilds you can use to make it complete. There are four wild cards in the deck, and if you want to use all four in a set, you're free to do that. Each wild used will represent one specific card from the set. For instance, if we have the skill rules set and we have natural cards for one of four, three of four, and four of four, but we have a wild that replaced the two of four, that wild is playing a very specific card. This is important because someone can ransom that wild during their turn. So in this case, player two is holding the two of four skill rules card. So during his turn, after he draws a card or picks up the discard pile, he can put that two of four skill rules card where that wild is and then take the wild card for his own use. He can use it right away or keep it in his hand until later. Since the set placed still has four cards, the player that placed it still gets four points, but that wild can be taken or ransomed by any player with that natural card during their turn. So even though there's only four wilds, they can be used over and over by many players by replacing the card that that wild represents with a natural card that they hold in their hand during their turn. Specialty Cards Now that you have the basics down, let's spice things up with some specialty cards. There are six different specialty cards and the cards themselves will tell you what to do. All of them are played as a discard, which will initiate the action. All of these cards will help the person who discards them but they will do so in different ways. Player's choice allows you to ask one other player for a specific card, and they have to give it to you if they have it. So if a card you need is in the discard pile and player two picks up that discard pile last turn, you know they have a card you need. Play this card as a discard and ask him for it. There are two player's choice cards in the deck. Pass a card allows you to get rid of a pesky, crappy caregiver or another unwanted card to a neighbor. When a player discards this card, every player will pass a card to a neighboring player, either right or left, depending on the card. Free play gives you a chance to draw extra cards from the deck when this card is played as a discard. This can help you build a set or score a wild. The fire drill card is the most fun specialty card though. When you play the fire drill card, all players that have a light blue washing rules card have to hand it over to you. This is a great way to build an instant set that could end the hand on your next turn if you're super lucky. Penalty cards. 
Penalty cards are just that, a penalty. Three of them will apply to the next player, but one of them will apply to the player that draws the penalty card. Any player that draws the Care Plan Catastrophe card is stuck with that card for the entire hand. It cannot be discarded or traded, and it will cost you a point at the end of the hand. Playing the other three penalty cards as a discard will cause the action on the card to apply to the next player. For instance, discarding the Oops You Forgot to Document card means the next player has to discard all cards in their hand that have either a number one or a number two on them. Then their turn will be skipped. Discarding the HIPAA violation card means the next player has to show their entire hand to all other players and skip their turn. Discarding the call off crisis card will apply to the next player. All other players will give them one crappy caregiver card if they have one in their hand, and that will skip the player's turn. Penalty cards can be fun to play, especially if you think that someone is about to end the hand. Because crappy caregiver cards count against them, loading them up with crappy caregiver cards can buy you some time to complete your sets. Basic Strategy so far, we have learned that you will collect complete sets, cards of the same color, place those sets for points using natural cards or wilds, take wilds for your own use by replacing the wild card with the natural card during your turn, and get rid of crappy caregiver cards before the hand ends. The first person to reach 40 points wins the game. But you can use some basic strategy to help improve your odds of winning. Some people like to focus on little sets, six cards or less, because they're easier to complete and get you points quickly. But even though you are scoring points, it doesn't end the hand, which means others can also score points. Some people like to go straight for the big sets, seven cards or more, to end the hand as soon as their set is placed. This reduces your opponent's ability to score points, putting you in the lead for the game total. But big sets take time to build, and an opponent can end the hand before you have a chance to get all the cards you need. Some people like to work on one set at a time, discarding all set cards that don't fit the set they are collecting. Others like to tackle several sets at once to give them the maximum points possible. Some like to be the first to pick up the entire discard pile to get lots of principal pieces and build a set from there but it will also get you a lot of pieces that you don't need too. It also gets you a ton of crappy caregivers that you have to discard before you can end the hand so they don't count against you. Every player is different and will have a different strategy. Just like your patients will have different preferences and ways of doing things, what works for one won't necessarily work for another. Advanced Strategy you can use specialty and penalty cards to help give you an edge if you apply some advanced strategy. If you pay attention to all the cards in the discard pile, sometimes it'll contain a complete set for instant points. And pay attention to who picks up the pile because they may have a card you need. But you also have to apply critical thinking when deciding whether to place a complete set now or wait. Waiting runs the risk of having others in the hand without you scoring points, or you could become the victim of a penalty card or a specialty card. If a competitor is ahead of you in game points, ending the hand right after they picked up a discard pile and are holding on to a bunch of crappy caregivers can give you a chance to catch up quickly. If you think that someone is about to end the hand, play a specialty card to help block them by skipping their turn, or making them discard important cards. Use a pass a card to hand them a crappy caregiver card. Use a HIPAA penalty card to make them show you the set they're working on so no one discards those cards. The opportunities are endless and exciting. Advanced strategies can help you see how both short-term decisions and delayed actions can affect outcomes. And this is a great nursing skill to develop along your journey. Learning points. This game isn't all fun and games though. It's designed to help students recognize important skills principles and nursing processes that will lead to success in the workplace. The principles cards can be used as flashcards for study. 
Crappy caregiver cards demonstrate negative workplace behaviors that should be avoided. A correlation can be made between the fact that there are only eight crappy caregiver cards, but they tend to show up everywhere. It seems like there's a whole lot more than eight. The specialty cards offer a lecture opportunity about observation, paying attention to details, knowing who to ask for a specific card or who needs a crappy caregiver to keep them from ending the hand. And the fire drill is a great review of RACE for fire safety. Penalty cards provide real life consequences for common errors. Forgetting to document can have long-term consequences to the player because they have to discard cards from the set they are collecting. So forgetting to document always causes extra work. HIPAA violations expose private information to others, like their own cards. This, again, will have long-term consequences on the player. Either no one will cooperate and discard the cards they need, or they'll have to collect another set instead. Call-off crisis causes coworkers to consider you a crappy caregiver, and they're going to show it by giving you those cards. And not following the care plan has long-term consequences that you cannot pass off to anyone else. So this game is meant to be enjoyable, but it's also educational in a variety of ways. Feel free to incorporate these lessons into your instruction. I hope you enjoyed this instructional video on the CNA Principles card game, and I hope you enjoy the game. Until next time, happy caregiving!